Cosmetology State Board Demonstration of Client 1 is a Cosmo Ready video production. The Proctor will read the following instructions. You will prepare your work area for your client. You will set up the universal supplies you will use throughout the examination. You will also set up the supplies for the following sections of the exam. Thermal curling and hair cutting. Plug in your iron at this time. You will prepare your client for services. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. You may begin. Follow along on the Client 1 Setup Checklist to see all the steps that are being performed in this video. The first thing that is being done is the three paper bags are being set up for items to be disinfected, soiled linens, and your trash. At this point, now that you have these bags set up, you're going to pull out your disinfectant, a paper towel, and you're going to clean your work area. Once you've cleaned your work area, you will now have a place to put your dirty paper towel in the trash bag. If you clean the work area before you pull that bag out, you won't have anywhere to put that. Next, pull out your sanitizer and begin setting up your station. Remember, you will also plug in your curling iron and turn it on. Notice I have the stand down at this point. Then you will proceed to drape the mannequin for thermal styling. Time that you go into your universal supplies, you must sanitize your hands before going into that container. When you are done pulling the items you need from the container, you have to make sure that the lid is on and either snapped or zippered. all done setting up, step back to indicate you have finished. The proctor will read the following instructions. You will perform thermal curling. You will form two curls on the top of the head and two curls on one side of the head. A complete curl must be formed from base to end. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. After they are repeated, you do not begin until you actually hear those words. You may begin. When you begin any new task and step toward the client, always sanitize your hands. Once you've sanitized, you're gonna set up your thermal curling supplies by pulling everything out of the supply bag and then putting the bag in the trash. Here you can see I forgot to put it in the trash. So that should go in the trash. Perform your scalp exam.
after the scalp exam, you are going to section the hair to place your thermal curls. Here we are using aluminum duckbill clips. Plastic clips could melt if the curling iron touches them and little metal clips that you would use to pin rollers could actually heat up and burn the client. So that's why we're using aluminum clips. Next, you're going to test your curling iron on white tissue paper. In this case, it's a neck strip. Hold it for five seconds and make sure that there's no scorching on the tissue. Make sure you look to see that there's no scorching. You only have to test your iron once during the state board exam. Now we're going to form our curl. Rock the base with the shell lifted so that we don't crimp the hair. Slide out to the ends, rotating and clicking, notice the heat resistant comb is underneath the curling iron protecting the scalp and I have clicked in the hair ends. I'm just testing the temperature of the hair. You're going to slide out your iron and your curl is formed. You will complete another curl on the top of the head and then you will move to the side of the head and complete two curls. You have completed the thermal curling task. Clean up all your supplies and dispose of them in the proper place. Sanitize your hands and step back to indicate you have finished. The proctor will read the following instructions. You will perform a haircut. You will complete a basic layered haircut using razor and shears. You will cut at least one inch of hair throughout the haircut. Do not remove your hair clippings from your work area until you are instructed individually by the examiner to do so. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 30 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 15 minutes remaining. Step back to indicate you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. A 90 degree haircut. You may begin. And I have my mannequin section. She has her top section, section on each side by the ears, and then the back is sectioned into two sections with a guide that's dropped down. The first thing we're going to do is
create our guidelines. We want to have her head straight. I'm going to comb that smooth. My comb has beads on it, but most of the styling combs have numbers, which would be the inches. So I'm just going to measure her right now and see where we're at. This up. I'm going to take about an inch off. So on either side of this guideline that I have dropped down, I'm going to place the comb underneath, and I'm going to cut to my yellow bead on this side. And I'm not holding the hair with a lot of tension. It's just gently placing the comb underneath that hair. The more you stretch wet hair, the more it's going to bounce back up. Hair stretches 50% when it's wet and 20% when it's dry, so you want to keep that in mind when you're creating that guideline. Okay. Now I have a point here and a point on this side, and I'm just going to connect my dots. Try and do this so I don't block your view. Okay, so you have to envision this whole section in your hand. The reason I did not make a point in the middle, on the mannequin she comes down to a point. So I have a guide here and a guide here. I'm going to start on this side, walking over, don't go past that second knuckle, and then just reshift your fingers so that you have that space here now and connect that over. And just a little bit longer right here. So I'm just going to come around the corner and take this little corner off right there. So that is our guideline. Now we're going to take down oh, about a half inch section from there. And again, this is a 90 degree haircut. down our sections. Clean partings are very important. That's how we're going to keep our hair cut workable. The hair workable. Okay. So now from here, I'm going to just turn her sideways so that you can see this. I'm taking a section from the center in the middle. And I'm going to elevate this out from the head at 90 degrees. Here's my guideline here. I'm going to go to the highest point of what's previously cut, which is at the top, not the lowest point. Hair is pulled directly out from the head, and I'm going to make a cut. This actually may look like a 45 degree cut, and it does because of the curve of the head in the back, but it is pulled out directly from the head, so it will be a 90 degree haircut. And you want to make sure that you take a part of the previously cut section as you walk around to the left side. And then what I like to do is cross check right away horizontally, just from what you just cut, not the guideline. And I'm a little long in this piece here, so I'm gonna just come back in right here, and there I have a little bit of extra hair. Clean that up, and look at it this way, and that's much better. If I came in this way and went to clean up that peak, I actually could end up with a hole in that haircut at that level. So now I'm gonna go center to the right, following the guide, taking part of my previously cut section. And you want to make sure that you don't pull the hair back to that center section. You want each section to come straight out from itself, pieces that you're cutting. You always want to cut palm to palm so that it extends your wrist. I'm just going to turn her head a little bit here. And we're going to continue at this rate, pulling straight out from the head, and then cross-checking as we move up the back. If you don't see your guideline as you're cutting, do not cut. And I'm slightly longer right here, so I probably over-directed a little bit. So I'll come back in. I can see little short pieces underneath here, so I'm going to clean that up. Another vertical piece pulling out. And then this last one has to come more this way. And I can see my guide. If I can't see it, I move the hair out of my way and I can see it underneath there. I need to cut that off. So this hair I had over-directed back. That's why it was longer. All right. Cross-check the whole thing. Remember, if you cut vertically, you're going to cross-check horizontally. Now that I've worked up the back to above the ear section here, that lower crowner, just above the occipital. I've done my vertical cutting, I've cross-checked horizontally, now I'm going to pull down my side section. And I'm going to take my part so that it lines up with what I previously cut in the back so that I have a guide. Now what I generally do is if I'm doing a zero degree haircut, this would have to line up to my bottom guide here. 
45. I would hold it out a little bit since it's a 90 degree haircut. I am actually going to elevate this straight out from the head and cut this at 90 degrees straight out from the head. Try not to cut past that second knuckle. I just did. Okay, and then I'm going to turn her. I would do the same on the other side. So to save time, I'm just going to move on here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work up both of these sections at the same time. I'm going to take my guide from here, or my next drop down section, and my next drop down section. And I'm going to start in the center of the back. Let me just turn her a little bit here. And I'm going to comb the hair and elevate it straight out from the head. Go from the top of that guide, from the previously cut section, up, go from the previously cut, cut my section. Don't go past that second knuckle. Now at this point I'm cutting over my hand or above my finger and that's because if I were to cut inside my hand it would be very awkward at this time. My elbow would have to be way up in the air and it's just very uncomfortable. So I'm going to cut over my finger but the hair has to come straight out from the head and you need to be able to see your guide in there. If you don't see your guide, even by moving the hair down flat on your finger and you don't see the little short ones, do not cut. Because this is where everything can go wrong if you don't see your guide. Turn her a little bit this way. And again, everything is straight out. This is a moving guide. So I'm taking some of the previously cut section and walking it along as I go. I'm gonna cross check horizontally, just the section I cut. I don't wanna comb down and check down here, then I'm checking the hair from the nape area. So I just wanna take a section right where I was cutting, pull it out, I have a little peak right here, and that's normal, that's the transition between the partings, and it's not much of a peak that way. Again, don't check this way and cut it off. You could actually end up with a hole in, in your hair. You don't want to do that. Here I have a little bit right here. It needs to come off much better. Okay, and then I'm going to continue up, working up till I get up to the top. Okay, here we are. Everything is cut all the way up the back except for this very tiny section they call the football section in the crown area. We're not going to cut that just yet. The sides have been cut. Everything is even to my yellow dot, my yellow bead on my comb. So now what we're going to do is from this very front section, I'm going to take a center mohawk and cut that at 90 degrees straight up to my yellow bead. I'm going to take this too wide of a section, just a narrow little mohawk section. I've been holding my bead this way, so I'm going to hold my hair this way. Let me turn her sideways so you can see better. Okay. Elevate straight up from the head. There's my yellow bead on my comb. Put it to the top of my fingers. So now it's to my yellow bead, just like everything else in the haircut. Now what I'm going to do is from this is going to be one guide, the new mohawk section, and I'm going to blend the side of that top section. So I'm going to have a guide here and a guide down here. I want to cut what's in between. This is one technique to avoid getting too short in the crown because remember I told you we still have that football section that I haven't cut yet to. Guideline to guideline and cut. Straight up from the head, guideline to guideline and cut. And make sure you can see that guideline through there. Okay, so that part is cut. I can go ahead and cut this side then. I'm just going to take some of this hair comb it over to this side. And we'll start 
in the previously cut section in the back. This is a little harder because now I'm blocking your view. Let me uh, turn it backwards here so that maybe you can see better. So I did my first cut here, blended my guide, take another one, make sure I can see guideline to guideline. I know what's against my black smock, sorry. My haircut is almost complete at this time. I'm just blending the rest of it in here, elevating that hair straight up, out from the head. Now I have the last two, the last two little tops of those back sections that I'm going to blend in. And this is going to be a blending from up here, previously cut, to what's in the back. I'm just going to walk around the crown of the head. And there's a large piece of it right there. Try not to go past that second knuckle. It's very, very hard, even for me after all these years. You get cut a few times, you'll know. You'll learn your lesson. Just covered that in class what to do if you cut yourself so we have several of you make posters to cover the blood procedure now a final cross check what you want to do is you want to comb the hair through where all the partings were so we had a parting here we had partings here so you, and a parting down the center so you really want to just kind of walk through that whole haircut across where all the partings were just to make sure everything's blended and we have no peaks And that is our 90 degree haircut. Use the same length all over. Next we're going to take a look at some razor techniques. Now for the NIC tests you only need to remove length with the razor however some states will require texturizing. I will demonstrate a few techniques for texturizing after removing length. Okay, I'm just going to show you a few little techniques with the razor. And this is just going off of my previously cut 90 degree mannequin. So when I take my section out, what you want to do with your client is you're going to pull the hair out, but you need to let the guide drop down, so we'll let that drop. This is slithering with the razor. You do it as an etching. It's going to feather those ends really nicely for you. Let the guide drop. Hold on to the hair tight in those fingers. And that's a slithering motion. You can also take a blunt cut. And you'll have to do this at the Wisconsin State Board. So you take your section, let your guide drop, and you just I have to hold my stand here. Push through, and it gives you a nice straight line. Again, let the guide drop. I can see the guide dropping underneath. Hold those fingers tight together and move through. So that blade, drop that guide, the blade never leaves your fingers. Okay, I don't want to see any like this, just hacking at the hair. Okay, you want to have control of that hair in your fingers and move it along through. Okay. Another thing that we're able to do with our razor is slide cutting. Some people are very talented and have very sharp shears that they can slide cut with their shear, but you need very sharp shears to do this. And for us, for slide cutting today, all you have to do is just rest your blade right behind your fingers and slide it down. Okay, just rest it and slide it right down behind, and that's going to take off just a little bit, and it's going to give you a really nice angle. It's going to come in really handy when you have somebody with longer hair and they want you to have that feathering toward their face. The razor that you can do is texturizing. You can take it as a horizontal piece and not at a parting, so not where they normally part their hair, but you can either just tap your blade in on the hair and for coarse hair, you would be farther away, and she has coarse hair with a mannequin. And then comb out those pieces. So that's one way that you can texturize the hair. Tap, 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 just to remove a little bit. Another way, you can either do it vertically, like this, 
and just lay your razor. If you lay your razor flat, you're gonna take off a lot. So you're gonna lay it flat, but then raise it up 45 degrees and just lightly pull it toward you. And that's what you're gonna get off then, just that small amount. If you wanted to do it horizontally, same thing. Lay it flat, but then raise it 45 degrees and just slide it toward you to remove some of that bulk that's in there. Proctor will read the following instructions. You will break down your work area and dispose of supplies used in the previous sections of this examination. You will prepare your work area for a new client. You will set up the universal supplies you will use for the remainder of this examination. You will also set up the supplies for the following sections of the exam. Chemical waving, predisposition test, strand test, highlighting with foil, virgin application, hair color retouch, virgin hair relaxer application. You will prepare your client for chemical services. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. You may begin. Step forward and sanitize your hands prior to touching anything at your station. Check to make sure the curling iron has cooled down before you put it aside. Again, anytime you come back to your work area, sanitize your hands. Begin to move supplies to their designated bags, whether it be items to be disinfected, your trash, or soiled linens, which is where your towels and capes would go. Undrape client one and move her to the side. Once you have put her to the side, you are going to disinfect your work area as if you have a new client coming in. Any of the bottles that will remain out other than your disinfectant and your hand sanitizer must also be disinfected. So that means that you need to spray some disinfectant on a paper towel and wipe down your water bottle because that is going to be staying out at the station. Once everything has been disinfected, you will pull out the following supply bags. Chemical waving, predisposition test and strand test, highlighting with foil, virgin application, hair color retouch, and virgin hair relaxer application. Keep these items in the supply bags until you perform these demonstrations, otherwise there'll be too much going on at your station. Next, bring client 2 to your station and proceed to drape client 2 according to chemical draping procedures. We'll apply a towel, then the shampoo cape or plastic cape, and then there should be a towel over the top of the shampoo cape. After you have draped your client, 
proceed with removing the supplies from your chemical waving supply bag set up for your chemical waving service. When you are all done setting up, step back to indicate you have finished. Cosmetology State Board Demonstration of Client 1 is a Cosmo Ready video production.